Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome once again to One Take Studios, coming to you not quite live with everybody's favorite subject, long division. Specifically polynomial long division, which, for better or worse, looks a lot like grade school long division. So we're actually going to start with the walk down that lane. Um, this is part of a larger topic, so this is a video that only focuses on polynomial long division for the moment. All right, so we're talking three dividing into 526. Hmm, how did this work? How did this work? How many times does three go into five? Once. And then one times three is three. And then we subtracted. Five minus three is two. And then that was so much fun. We brought down the two and we did it again. How many times does three go into 22? Uh, seven times. Seven times three is 21. We subtract it again, and that's going to give me one, and we'll bring down the six. How many times does six, so three go into 16? Uh, that's going to be five times, and that's a total of 15, because so five times three is 15. We subtract, and we get one. So what is our answer? Well, you may have written it as 175 remainder one. Uh, can I offer an alternate way to write this solution, though? It went in 175 times and a remainder of 1 over my divisor of 3. This is 175 and 1 third. Okay, 175 and 1 third is my outcome. Basically what I'm doing here is just in terms of, let me change my angle on this, there we go, smidge, there we go. Um, think about if I just do, oh let's make up numbers for a second, um, let's go with, yeah, let's do this, um, I don't want to go there, 37, there we go, 37 over 5. This is an improper fraction. How would I write that as a mixed number? This is the same kind of idea. 5 goes into 37 7 times, because 7 times 5 is 35, with a remainder of 2, and so we would write 2 fifths. So even though this is not long division, this changing an improper fraction to a mixed number, that's the same thing that I just did with my result here. All right, so this process right here of long division, this is what we're going to try to recreate on a slightly modified level for polynomials. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so what if we have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 18, and we're trying to divide by x squared plus 2x plus 3? Um, yeah, let's set it up like this one, shall we? This is what we're dividing by. This goes outside of our division bar. So let's hope I have enough space here. I think I probably do if I'm wise. Uh, this is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 3. And we are dividing that into this other dude. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 18. This is my dividend. This is my divisor. Dividend divisor. Okay. What did we say over here? We said first we're going to see how many times 3 goes into 5, and that was once. I need to modify our lead question a smidge for the polynomials. I'm going to ask it this way instead. Just focus on the x squared and the x cubed, the first term and the first term. All right. What would I need to multiply by x squared in order to get x cubed? Hmm. I'm going to switch colors to maybe try to make this a smidge bit more readable. What if I put an x here? Because if I put an x here, then just like I did 1 times 3 is 3 and subtracted, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do x times x squared plus 2x plus 3. And I'm going to set up for subtraction, just like this one. Again, why did I choose the x? Well, I said this is x cubed. This is x squared x squared times x would cause it to match the x cubed. I'm looking to match this term to this term. And 1x multiplied by x squared would give me x cubed. There's the match I'm looking for. With this, however, I am multiplying these guys times all three of these terms. So I'm going to do the x times the x squared, which is x cubed, which matches, which is what I wanted. I'm doing the x times the 2x, that's a plus 2x squared. I'm doing the x times a 3, which is a positive 3x. Okay, look at like terms, like terms, like terms. Coincidence? I think not. This actually lines up really well. Now, this is not one of those skills that's going to save your life someday, but 
it's worth just kind of working through here. And if you're not paying attention right now, if your brain is off like chasing butterflies in a field, you're about to lose this. Just like we subtract three here, we're going to subtract this entire outcome. We are subtracting all of this. Subtracting all of this. Are you paying attention? x cubed minus x cubed. Gone. Good. I wanted that to happen. That's why I arranged to have the x cubed there so my first term would drop out. Negative 2x squared minus 2x squared. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4 x squared. Watch your signs. Negative 5x minus 3x. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8x. And that was so much fun, we're going to bring down the next piece, the next term, the next number, which in this case is a minus 18. Ladies and gents, that's so much fun, we're going to do it again. Just like doing the second tier over here. Again, I'm going to ask myself the lead question. How do I make my x squared match my new first term, my negative 4x squared? Well, this is x squared. This is negative 4x squared. If I multiply this by negative 4, I think that would actually work quite nicely. Because negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. So I just put the negative 4 here. And again, this negative 4 is going to be multiplied times all three of these terms here. So negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Yay, it matches. That's what I wanted. Negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Ooh, that one matches too. I wonder what that means. And then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. That one doesn't match. All right. Do you remember what comes next? We're going to subtract everything in this line, just like we subtracted the 21 over here. So minus all of this. Again, you've got to be focused. Are you focused right now? Because if you lose a sign, you're going to be wrong. Negative 4x squared minus negative 4x squared. Negative 4 minus negative 4. Gone. Zero. Wipes out. Negative 8x minus negative 8x. Wait a minute. That's also going to be gone. Does that always happen? No, but it happens sometimes, and this is one of those times. Negative 18 minus negative 12. Hold on, so negative 18 minus negative 12, that's essentially adding 12 to this. This is going to be negative 6. Okay, all right. So what did I do with my remainder over here? I said I'm going to write this like it's a mixed number. I'm looking at how many whole times it goes in, and then taking my remainder and stacking it over divisor. Remainder over divisor. So this is x minus 4, that's how many whole times it goes in. I'm going to take my remainder, which is negative 6, I'm going to stack that over top of my divisor. Okay, so I'm going to write it actually like this right below here. This goes in x minus 4 times and has a remainder of negative 6 over my divisor x squared plus 2x plus 3. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my answer to my division problem goes in x minus 4 times, I take the remainder, stack it over top of the divisor, this is my giant hideous mixed number, and this is my answer. Okay, I'm going to do one more of these, they don't sit well with people, and you won't have to do them that much in your life, but occasionally you do need this skill, so I'm just kind of throwing it out there. Alright, so, this one worked out pretty nicely. Why? x cubed, x squared, x to the first, no x. x squared, x to the first, no x. Descending order, both of them. And there were no gaps in the lineup. This is 2, 1, 0 for my x powers. 3, 2, 1, 0 for my powers. You need a delightful battle cry to go with this. Descending order is a necessity and no gaps in the lineup. And I'll show you an example with gaps here in a moment so that you can see that. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you are doing long division, this is what I want you to yell. Descending order, no gaps! Descending order, no gaps! Because if you forget this and you mess it up, none of it's going to work out correctly. So let's look at what that might be. All right, so like I said, one more, one more. Then I promise to leave you alone. I wrote this a little bit differently. This I wrote is stacked as a fraction. This I wrote with a division sign in the parentheses. It's the same thing, and it's going to work the same way. Um, but considering that we just talked about descending order, no gaps. Seriously, I want you to cheer that like at, at football games and, and basketball games and stuff. Ooh, volleyball games too. Why not? X to the fourth, X to the third. It's in descending order. X to the first. What are we missing? 
we do not have an x squared term. That's a gap. We're going to have to fill in that gap to make this work. Is this one okay? This is x to the first, x to the zero. Yeah, that one's actually okay. So I'm going to set this up with x plus 2 on the outside because that is what I'm dividing by. That's my divisor. And then under here, my dividend, let's see. Am I using the word dividend right? I just had a mental brain fart there. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. 3x to the fourth minus x cubed. How do I get past the fact that I have a gap without changing the problem? Plus 0x squared. That didn't change the problem. That's just a 0, but now it's a placeholder, so I do not have the gap that I'm trying to avoid. And then plus 5x and minus 1. Descending order, no gaps. Beautiful. Now, I want you to be brave. Here's what I really, really want right now. I want you to pause this video, and I want you to do your best to actually divide this using this as a model, and then come back to me. It'll probably go terribly wrong, and that's okay. Write in pencil and try this, okay? So please pause now. You better have paused. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Coming back to what did we do? We were trying to match the first term with the first term. So I need the x to match the 3x to the fourth. So what would it do? I need to multiply by 3 to make that happen. This is x to the first. This is x to the fourth. So I'm going to need a 3x cubed to make that happen. So again, we are launching our water balloons. That's going to get multiplied by both of these terms. So 3x cubed times x is 3x to the fourth, which is what I wanted to happen. It matches, yay me. And then 3x cubed times 2. That's a positive 6x cubed. And check it out. Our like terms still match up. What comes next? We subtract, right? We subtract everything in the line. Don't blink. Keep your focus. Those two are going to drop out. 3x to the fourth minus 3x to the fourth. Negative 1x to the third minus 6. Negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7x to the third. That was so much fun. We'll bring down the next one. It's a 0, but we can do that, right? That's okay. All right, we can do that. So now, new first term, first term. Make a match. What would I multiply the x by to make it match a negative 7x cubed? Well, okay, that's going to have to be a negative 7 as part of that. And then this is x, this is x cubed, so we're going to have to multiply by x squared to make that happen. So again, this next term, the negative 7x squared, is going to get multiplied times both of these guys to give me a negative 7x cubed. And then negative 7x squared times 2 is minus 14. Yes, yes, x squared. Subtract everything in the line. Pay attention, pay attention, subtract carefully. Negative 7 minus negative 7, those terms drop. 0x squared minus negative 14x squared. Minus negative, that's positive 14x squared. Bring down the next one. Plus 5x, we are getting there. First term, first term. Make a match, boys and girls, make a match. This is an x, this is a 14x squared. What will we need? Well, we're going to need the positive 14, and we're going to need one more x, because x times x would give us our x squared. So again, our new term, 14x times each of these guys right here. So it's a positive 14x squared, and then times 2, that's going to be plus 28x. But that's not attractive. Who cares? Keep going. Subtract everything in the line. 14x squared minus 14x squared, gone. 5x minus 28x should be hopefully negative 23x, yes? And there's still one number we haven't brought down yet, so one last time, minus 1. One last time, people. Make a match. This is a minus 23x, this is an x. What do we need? We need a minus 23 to make it match. So negative 23 times x is negative 23x. And the negative 23 times 2 is what? Negative 46, yes? Negative 46? That says negative 46, or minus 46. Again, subtract everything in the line, everything in the line. These guys drop out because they're supposed to, because we made a match. Negative 1 minus negative 46. That's really plus 46, so this is just a 45. That is my remainder. Do you remember how you write this answer? We're going to take how many times it goes in, which is 
x to the third minus 7x squared plus 14x minus 23. And we're going to take and do remainder over divisor. So 45 over x plus 2. So tack that on the end, 45 over x plus 2. Ladies and gents, that is our answer. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of context going on right now. This is just a basic skill that we don't use a lot, but we do need on occasion. So there we go. Don't give up. Focus, be patient, and practice. Thanks, guys.